two parallel uh, lines of understanding. You can reduce your anxiety. You can manage effectively your stress. You can improve your sleep. And you can overcome fatigue. And definitely there are a lot of benefits if the person is having a lot of problems. So this is how the science looks at the mindfulness. Second, the positive. What is positive? You are healthy. Even when you are healthy, you go to a restaurant and eat. Even when you are healthy, you sleep. You never say, Megan, you know, I'm healthy, so I'm not going to sleep today mm -hmm. <laughs> for about a week. We don't understand this. So when you are healthy, you must practice mindfulness. Ah, who cares? Let me have a lot of stress, anxiety, problem, and then I will join. That is totally a wrong perception about this journey to the mindfulness or any meditation. Oh, who cares? You know, I'm okay. I'm living my life. You know, I'm enjoying. Now I have so little conflict and we don't know that these little conflicts will become bigger even in relationship. We don't care that. Oh, it's okay. You know. I know my honey at least you know, understands me so there is no problem. We fight and then we join again. We don't understand this part. Why we don't understand with this part? because we have a wrong perception in our life. Third part, what is meditation and mindfulness? And how we, you know, because today this is your first uh, session, so I'll make it uh, more uh, an introductory and talk, and then we'll understand through our experience. What is meditation? What is mindfulness? First thing, mindfulness and meditation. Come on, my friend, come on. Come on. Uh, so, mindfulness and meditation are synonyms, are essentially one. What is this? First understanding, it discovers your real self, your real you. What is real you? So in order to understand that real you, we have to go back to the Eastern wisdom. We cannot explain it through the science. But why? You will ask me why. Because the science has yet to understand the subjective reality. Don't worry, you are addressing me. Um, yeah, they not. So let it be casual, comfortable, keep smiling. <laughs> so understand, the science understands everything that is outside us. It discovers the natural phenomena. It understands your physiological functioning. But are you physiologic? You are different from physiology. You see the point? You are a teacher, so that's why I'm telling. <laughs> and you should also understand to progress. So you see, the science always tries to understand what is outside you. So the manual of the science cannot help you to understand mindfulness. It can only help you to understand the benefits of mindfulness. What are the physiological changes, biochemical changes, neurological changes? You know, they will, uh, if you go to a psychiatrist, they will put you into a psychiatric questionnaire and they say, okay, yes, 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 you are improving because your score is low, the stress score is low. But they do not understand who you really are. So, what we do? We have to look the manuals of Eastern psychology. Because the goal of the Eastern psychology is to discover your real self. It works different. It works beyond cause and effect relationship. What is effect? 
had it. What is the cause? I fought with my honey. <laughs> that is why. You know, my boss in the school told me something different that he doesn't understand. My kids are happy. <laughs> you may have that statement. <laughs> yes? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah they say, I can understand that part very well. So we have to take help of the Eastern wisdom. Just to give you a brief, in Eastern psychology, you know, we have 3,000 texts. We have 3,000 masters. We have more than 1,000 practices. All can be known as mindfulness and meditation practices. But a teacher and educator has to understand your nature, your temperament, to give you the right practice. What we do? Uh, pull everyone into the breathing. <laughs> that sometimes, majority of the time, it doesn't work. Further coming down. One thing to understand clearly that every meditation is totally effortless, natural. But our mind is obsessed with doing something or the other. What to do? Mind is always obsessed with doing something or the other. So what to do? So it means we have to include some of the steps that will help you release that obsession. One example, that's why the meditation path becomes different. I conduct a different program tomorrow on Sunday 11 to 12. It's more an active meditation. Today I follow the effortless approach. For some people it is totally a different approach. So now what it means by effortless? <clears throat> and then we will start with a very simple but very effective practice. What is, what is, what did I say? What is effortless? You know about your mind? <laughs> Everyone knows about your mind. But do you become aware when your mind becomes crazy? Huh? You know, really? Let me give you an example. Can you plan to be angry tomorrow at 10 a.m.? So it means you cannot become aware when your mind becomes crazy. See that? What is the tool? If I maintain that self-awareness all the time in my life, I then start living in meditation. I need not to practice that meditation. One minute more. But before we start living into that state of meditation, we have to undergo the journey of different steps and practices that will help you release all your garbage of the mind. Do you agree? We have a garbage in the mind. The mind is always blaming. Always blaming. So the moment the mind blames, you need mindfulness. The moment, the moment the mind becomes lazy, you need mindfulness. The moment the mind becomes crazy, you need mindfulness. Until then we need to practice, 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 practice to reach to that state of inner peace. Last thing we will work on this. Always remember three things. Going within principles from Eastern wisdom, not from the science. So if you ask the scientist, you know, oh, let me go with it. I know you have digestive system, you have skeleton, you have six, you have 100 billion neurons in your brain. I'm not asking that. Is brain you? No. You are different from the brain. Are you the body? No. You are different from the... Are you the mind? No. So the Eastern wisdom manual says going within to discover yourself and filter out what you are not. Keep smiling. <laughs> Keep smiling, Gina. Where is the smile? Yes. Okay. 
So going within is the first principle, second principle, living within. You are driving, you have a traffic jam, and you become crazy. You reach your home, move inside, close the door. You don't invoke calmness, calmness is already there. Isn't it? Calmness is there. It's your condition, control, <laughs> you said. Same way, I have to go within myself, live within, and once you continue to live within, you awaken to the peace. That is your real self. Let us start our journey today. Close your eyes, sit or lie down. Let us lie down, Megan, first time. Don't worry. Don't follow the simple. You know, sometimes people say, you know, you have to sit. You can be, ha you can be happy. In while lying down, you can be. Uh, yes, yes, yes. No. So yes, lie down, sit, or lie down. So everyone is lying down. Be comfortable. First thing is to be comfortable. I'm going in a simple way. Uh, yeah. The way you want to be comfortable, you can uh, uh, sit or lie down. Whatever is most. Comfortable. The first thing, when you are comfortable, look at your neck joint, feel the sensation, and become aware. Simple thing. Means that you have not to do anything, my friends. What you need to do? You need to be aware. Look at the shoulder joints. So when you look at the shoulder joint, what is happening? You have started going within, coming closer to the body. Instead, the mind is going out. You see the point? Look at the hip joints. When you look at the hip joint, check it is comfortable, leave it. If it is uncomfortable, you can adjust and align and drop the discomfort. Dropping the discomfort, undoing the discomfort is not doing anything. Look at the knee joints. You know, the simpler the practice of mindfulness, the higher it is. So I'm giving you a very simple practice that what it needs, you need an extraordinary awareness and that awareness is hijacked by your thoughts by blaming mind, by lazy mind and crazy mind. So I expect that you all are living into that awareness. That is what the guided meditation is. Guided meditation is not to lecture. It to take you beyond the thinking pattern. Take your mind to the knee joints. Now see another obstacle. You're looking mentally the knee joints because the mind is looking. So the mind is feeling the sensation. So mind is now more engaged in feeling the sensation in the knee joints than the thinking pattern. You see it, what it means? You have started going within. <clears throat> so you are comfortable. Second is you are carefree. <clears throat> what is carefree? Free from all the cares. <clears throat> Who has to be free from all the cares? This crazy mind. Mind says, no, I have problem. No, mind says, no, I have this thing. No, I have to do this thing. No, I have to change the position of my body. So what the mind is doing? Mind is trying to overpower you, control you. The mind has been controlling you for months and years and days and nights and 24 by 7. So that is why it says, oh, let us move. I was not comfortable. Unnecessarily. So what should we do? You know, you hear the noise from outside and the mind says, oh, oh I'm disturbed. So that means that you are paying attention to these things. And what is the meaning of carefree? Let it happen. Let the noise be there. Your breath is short. Let it be short. 
Breath is long, let it be long. You feel the sensation in the hips, let it be there. You sense of indifference in the field of awareness makes you carefree. Now coming to the third point. What is the third point is being casual. What is the meaning of being casual? Natural. In the state of doing nothing. Check yourself. Look inside. My friends, I promised that this session is all about effortless. So maintain your awareness that you're not doing anything. You're not focusing. You're not making any effort. That demands an extraordinary awareness. And if that happens, you are there. I know and you also know. Now moving to the next step. The next step is what it means by going within. The studio, for example, what you did, you parked the car outside. You started moving towards the studio. So your journey started going within. What about the practice today? So when you start looking at the body, consciously and you feel the sensation the journey of going within has started oh the mind says what to do do nothing look at the head and the neck the moment you look at the head and the neck you feel the sensation accept this this sensation is positive beautiful don't ask the mind to start thinking oh oh this sensation is not good so so i should move the mind will make you crazy. Don't do that. <clears throat> it's a long journey in the life of every individual. Buddha took 27 years to reach to that stage. Well, I'll not use another statement. Look at the right arm. Going within means you're simply looking at the right arm. You feel the sensation. Awareness, you look at the left arm, you feel the sensation in awareness, you look at the rib cage, you simply look at the rib cage. Again, I'm asking you, you're not doing anything, my friends. Not doing anything. So you're looking at the rib cage. When you look at the rib cage, the breath is fast to let it be. Let it be. Casual. The moment you are casual, the mind leaves its craziness. It takes long time to understand, to be into that state. Look at the right leg. So the right leg is comfortable. It is carefree. It is casual. In that state, you look at the right leg, you feel the sensation, you are aware, and it is done. How? The way I'm aware of you all, my friends, here and now. I need not to do anything. My eyes are open and I'm looking at you. Look at the left leg. When you look at the left leg, you feel the sensation and awareness. Look at the entire body. Simply look at the entire body. When you look at your own body, you're looking the same way as you were looking at my body. Only difference that you are looking at your own body with your own mind that makes you aware, that helps the mind to go with it. But result is your sensation. That sensation tells you that you are there. There is no movement. Move to the next step. So the next step, the Eastern psychology says some people will fall into unconsciously. It is perfectly okay until you progress. Don't worry about it. Even if you hear the, the, the snoring, it is okay. Let the snoring make you aware that you are aware. Don't focus. Don't make any effort, my friends. 
Look at the head and the neck. This time experience the sensation and the stillness. Let the mind discover what it means by stillness. The studio is still. The car that is parked outside at this time is still. Your mat is still. See that? Can you experience that stillness in the head and the neck? Why? Uh, such a simple answer. The door of the studio is still that helped you to move within. If it is not still, you have to make an effort. Look at it. A simultaneous metaphor makes your mind understand and become a look at the right arm. Casually looking at the right arm and experience, then discover the sensation and the stillness. Look at the left arm. Look at the left arm, sensation and the stillness. Mind will ask you to be crazy. It will demand a lot of things. And if you don't pay attention to what the mind is demanding, your mind will go within. Mind will instantly go within. The mind demands and causes the anxiety. So let the mind say, no, oh, I feel craziness. Thank you, mind. The mind says, no, you are feeling bad. Thank you, mind. Why? You have come to me to listen to me to succeed. You see that, you know, I'm just making you aware. I'm triggering your mind, making you more alert and attention with all humility, with all love and care. Look at the right leg. The moment you look at the right leg, you feel the sensation and stillness on one hand. At the same time, the mind triggers, you know, oh my, I feel. This is the mind wants to work on you. As long as the mind will work on you, oh, mindfulness will be far from you, my friends. Look at the left leg. Sensation in the stillness. Look at it, my friends. It is such a beautiful journey. And today, I made the practice extremely extraordinary simple. A slight takeover by your mind. You know what happens? The mind will blast you. It will bring in all laziness, craziness, blaming, reaction, resistance. And it is that mind will change your breath and you'll say, oh, you're feeling bad. Leave it. Drop it. I'm your mind at this time. I am your mind. Look at the entire body, sensation and relaxation and the stillness. Sensation, relaxation and the stillness. In that state, look inside the head and the neck. Now see, you will judge yourself. You, when you look inside the head and the neck, outside you experience the sensation and stillness. As you experience, the car is parked outside, it is still, the studio is still, so everything outside is still. But we look at the head and the neck outside, there is a sensation, there is a stillness. And when you look inside, you experience the space. You don't imagine the space. It is you. And the moment you have that conscious experience, your mind has started living within. That is how the moment you moved inside the studio, you know you are living inside the studio. Did you make any effort? No. Look inside the right arm. The moment you are aware of only the infinite space, a sense of darkness, nothingness, 
What is happening? You're living with it. But at the same time, the mind says, okay, you, you're not listening to me. I'll make you crazy. So it brings in influx of millions of the thoughts. And then the mind says, I cannot decide. So when it doesn't decide, then what happens? Anxiety comes. Understand this. Understanding and awareness will take you deeper. Look at the left arm inside, outside, space, sensation and inside. Same space, nothingness. Look at it, nothingness. When there is a nothingness, the stillness continues. You give a mind to this studio, what will happen? It will start shaking. So means what shakes your body? The mind. Look inside the right leg. Outside you know everything is still inside. Nothingness. Look inside your left leg. What is outside? Sensation and stillness. Inside. The moment you are aware of inside there is nothingness means what? You have started working on the mind. If you, if your mind works on you, mindful, mindfulness practice will never succeed. In that entire body, look inside, anywhere, inside the heart or the head, Instant looking, instant awareness of nothingness, darkness, infinite space, and being there means what you have started living with. Him. But my dear friends, this mind is crazy. We have made it crazy since our birth. We have never educated the mind. We have beautified our body, but we have never beautified the mind. That is what the mindfulness is. So that is why what happens, it lives within for a second, and the next moment it starts thinking, it goes back, it starts thinking of its own problems, it starts thinking of the relationship, it starts thinking of what you need to do in the future, it falls into sleep. So there are millions and millions of obstacles that comes from your mind. My friends, not from me. Be sure, it doesn't come from me. So what needs to be done? Guided meditation means I'm your mind now until the mindfulness is complete. Come on. So looking within, you are looking at the breath. From inside, you're looking at the breath. From inside, it, as if you're too far. And deeper inside and from there, you look at the breath. So what happens when you look at the breath? When you look at the breath, you feel the breath is going in and out. Okay, we say, okay, breath is going in and out, good. We have to do nothing. Sure. Second point, when the breath goes in, you feel the sensation inside the nose. When the breath comes out, you feel the sensation inside the nose. Why should I feel the uh, sensation? It is natural. You are not creating a sensation. It is there. Are you aware I'm your mind? If you are aware, you're there. I need not to worry about you. And that is what I guide you, to change the mind, without doing anything. So, two things. The breath goes in and out, you are watching. You're not focusing on the breath, my friends. It is casual. Breath goes in, you know it. You feel the sensation, you know it. What is the third point? 
Do not change the rate and the rhythm of the breath. In this meditation, when you do not change the rate and the rhythm of the breath, why? Because if you do not change the rate and the rhythm of the breath, you don't invite the crazy mind, you don't invite the blaming mind, you don't invite the mind that has created the garbage of fear, of anxiety, of reaction, of doubt, of confusion, and there is a long list. See the point. What is the point? That we all are inside the studio. Let the traffic move in the street outside. Let the people come and go into the store. Oh, we are far away from it. When you experience that you are far from your own thinking pattern, you are with me, I am still your mind. If you are not, then even while listening to me, you are not listening. It is an extraordinary, the most beautiful journey in your life is any meditation with anyone. And my job is to give you the best every time. Every time I guide you differently. Why? I ask you the question. I get a reflection about your mental state. I observe your temperament. And then I know which way you should be going. You're looking at the breath that is going in and out, feeling the sensation of the breath, no change. At the fourth point, the moment the breath goes in, just drop, understand, drop the sound mentally. What sound you drop? Om Shanti, the breath comes out, Om Shanti. Where you drop? <clears throat> Understand, let me give you a metaphor. When a drop of a water drops into an ocean, can you find that drop? No. So, same way. The breath goes in. You drop Om Shanti into the infinite space and you become nothing. The breath comes out, you drop Om Shanti into the outer space. Om Shanti means what? I am the peace. I am not in peace. I am the peace. I am the peace. Come on. You are there. But when you are there, when? Understand. That's a very intricate and a beautiful philosophy, the moment the breath goes in, you are watching, at the same time you drop Om Shanti, that Om Shanti drops into the infinite space, merges, there is nothingness. But if you maintain your eyeness, that is created by the mind, that eyeness, what it will do? That eyeness will Return to the same anxiety, stress, duality, conflict, problems, suffering, pain. I can give you a long list. I believe you are my mind. I am your mind, not you are my mind. Yes, you are my mind or I am your mind is the same thing. So the moment I say... It goes into your ears and you are there. It doesn't require any effort to do it. See, you are in a state of sensation, relaxation in the stillness. In that state, your breath is going in and out. You feel the sensation. There is no change when the breath goes in. 
it is translating into your conscious experience. The breath goes in Om Shanti, drops into the infinite space and merges. Breath comes out Om Shanti. It drops into the infinite space outside and we all are, we just become nobody. When you are nobody, you are in the most beautiful state of inner calmness and peace. That is the key. It is a journey, untold journey. The teacher should be living into that state to know it, so that the teacher also knows where you are. Look at it. We are not doing anything. Why? There we are nobody. When we are nobody, how we can do anything? So how we are nobody? In the state of sensation, relaxation, in the stillness. The breath goes in, you feel the sensation, no change. When the moment the breath goes in, Om Shanti, that drops and merges into the infinite space. There is a nothingness. You are nobody. Breath comes out. Om Shanti, infinite space, merges, you are nobody. Even you see the point. What is the point of awareness? You are nobody. When you are nobody, some, it takes time. It demands understanding. The two principles work together. Coming from the Eastern wisdom, regular practice and wisdom. But that wisdom calls for your awareness. You cannot make this practice mechanical. No. If you make this practice mechanical, the meditation is destroyed. You can never achieve that state of mindfulness. I'm your mind. The way I'm experiencing, you are also. What is that experience? You are already into that experience, my friend. The state of sensation, relaxation in the stillness in the body living within, looking at the breath that is going in, dropping Om Shanti, nothingness becoming nobody, breath comes out. Om Shanti, dropping into that state of nothingness becoming nobody. Another metaphor, in deep sleep, you are nobody because you don't know where you are. You, There is no I in that deep sleep. But in mindfulness, you are fully aware of being nobody. When you are aware of being nobody, the mind is also not there. When the mind is not there, the garbage accumulated by the mind is also not there. When it is not there, you are in mindfulness. It's a journey. That's what I do. I customize and personalize the programs to affect the chains. That's what I have been doing almost for 35 years, day in, day out. Not a single day is left. If there is nobody, if there is a holiday, I spend more of the, most of my time still living. 
I will now chant three times. So let us chant together. First, you take a deep breath. Second breath. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Experience, my friend. It is your experience. That will work always. I'm a pointer. I'm a catalyst. I'm your car. You're the driver. Let us do it second time. Second breath. Shanti, shanti, shanti. One more point. We are going to do the third time, but this time you're looking inside your heart into the state of nothingness, nobodyness, and make sure you are reciting for you, not for anybody. You become totally free in a singing mode. Take a deep breath. Take another breath. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. We will also return in a specific way to maintain that state of the mindfulness. You see that? Many people complain, not to me, complain to their mind. You know, yes, I enjoy the very deeper state of mindfulness. The moment I reach my car, I become the same person. Who is responsible? You or me? You allow those mind, that garbage of the mind to return. If you maintain your awareness, I ask you a simple question. Can you plan to be angry tomorrow at 10 a.m.? No, you cannot. So don't plan to be stressed the moment you reach your car for driving home. <laughs> Bring your awareness on the right palm, your awareness on the left palm. Cover both your eyes with both your palms. Open the eyes inside. Ask yourself now. You are the judge. You are the teacher. You are the student. Ask yourself what happened. Gather your experience and thinking. Bring your hands down. We will share our experiences one after the other. Why? To help you to progress. It's not for me. It's for you. Hey Yaku, how are you? Good. Good? You see that? You did nothing and still we feel good. You see, that is the biggest point to be understood. Understand my friend. Yes, understand. Where, you see the smile. Understand the most important point in the life, the greatest sickness in the modern age that we have. Can you tell me? That kills you. That destroys your relationship. That gives you distress. That keeps the mind blaming, reacting, hesitating. What is that sickness? The greatest sickness is the sickness of the mind that wants to do Something or the other, all the time. Oh, I, I don't have any extra message over there. First thing, you see that? That is one example. Then, oh. mind. Mind. You see? You look at a person, oh, he's crazy. Did anybody, uh, didn't 